Today we are going to cover the cubital fossa and the flexors of the forearm. I have here a right arm. So this side is radial or lateral. This side is the medial or ulnar side. This is the distal end. This is the proximal end. And we're looking straight on at the anterior aspect of the forearm. Question one, what are the borders of the cubital fossa? We can think of the cubital fossa as having three borders, a roof and a floor. The three borders are laterally brachioradialis, medially pronator teres, proximally a line between the epicondyles of the humerus. The roof of the cubital fossa, which has been dissected away so that we can see its contents, is the bicipital aponeurosis, one of the two distal attachments of the biceps muscle. If we were to remove the contents of the cubital fossa, we would see that its floor is formed by the brachialis muscle which originates more proximally on the humerus. Next question. What are the contents from lateral to medial of the cubital fossa? From lateral to medial, the three contents of the cubital fossa are the tendon of the biceps muscle, the brachial artery, and the median nerve. If we follow these structures more distally, we would see that the tendon of the biceps dives deep to its bony attachments on the forearm. The brachial artery splits into the more lateral and superficial radial artery and the more medial and deep ulnar artery. And the median nerve will split into its various motor and sensory branches. Next question. What is the innervation of this muscle? This is the brachioradialis muscle. It's innervated by the radial nerve. Last question, what is the function of this large muscle in the intermediate layer of the flexors of the forearm? This muscle is the flexor digitorum superficialis. It originates proximally as one large muscle belly and splits distally into four tendons, each of which is responsible for flexion of one finger. If I tug this tendon, you can see that only the ring finger flexes.